Good day! Can I assume you're here for the puzzles? Philosophy and theorising is all very good, but every now and again you want to give your beard a rest and give your head a good scratch instead. You're watching this game as I'm playing this game, but I'm playing this game as if I'm being watched, because if I wasn't being watched then how I played would be unwatchable. To that end I've decided to do these star rooms in order. It's been suggested that I go to the Sea Temple sooner rather than later, so I'll compromise. I'll visit it halfway through our Pharaoh theme park, so I can stretch out the new stuff as thinly as possible. Apparently people enjoy films more when they've been told in advance what's going to happen. Presumably not blow by blow, but the general gist. Personally, there are loads of films I'm very glad I didn't have spoiled for me. There are plenty I can imagine it wouldn't matter much, like those involving Charlie Kaufman or David Lynch. One film I saw recently I might have wished I'd had spoiled for me a little bit was Under the Skin. I didn't know it was going to be creepy. The scene where, spoilers, a man's body goes through the same process as when you let go of a balloon without tying off the ends. I could probably have known about that in advance and still lived a long and happy life. Music went a bit wobbly there. That's not an omen. If something peculiar was going to happen, I'd let you know. I see all. I know all. My power knows no bounds. And yet your will is free, because you were made to be free. It is the very principle of your existence, without which the trials of this world would hold no meaning. To seek salvation must be your choice. I don't have time for your games, Elohim. I can either sit around or do puzzles. What do you expect? I suppose I could wait around for new messages to appear and comment on them, but what kind of existence is that? This last attachment, N star star, very similar to the sign over there. Looks like one third of a code to me, but I'll have a look at that picture later for clues. All of these logs are about being part of something greater. Alexandria told the entire Nomatics team about Talos, asking how can they help. Some boards over here? No, that's not actually exciting at all. Ooh, this is more like it. Anyway, the copious amount of hidden text is a quote from Bertrand Russell's essay, Dreams and Facts. The quote is, No man is liberated from fear who dare not see his place in the world as it is. No man can achieve the greatness of which he is capable until he has allowed himself to see his own littleness. I can't do anything else in this room, but I can bring something in with me. I feel like I'm not getting the point of this thing. Although, perhaps my avatar has a good reason. Don't swing an axe unless you've got something to swing it into.
I am really psyched about using these fans some more. I envisage connectors being launched clear across the map over and over again, but it looks like those sort of components just get pushed along. So this here, as the room suggests, is a dum-dum mine that just bumps into trees. So it looks like I'm going to have to babysit it. In the meantime, Bertrand Russell's essay talks at length about everyday people's irrational beliefs. Everyone from tribal savages consuming their enemies for power to those in polite society maintaining class as if it were a tangible asset on its own. His main point is that there's no need for hostility towards each other with the scientific progress we've made and irrationally invoking the wrath of nature upon one's enemy. It's ludicrous when as a group we have the power to bend nature to our will, to most extents. We have to dispose of the belief that we are somehow naturally more entitled than anyone else, and instead fly through the air with axe in hand. I tried to throw it while in midair, but it just dropped to the floor. Again, this robot is suddenly more sensible than I am. So yes, if we face up to our physical powerlessness, and don't use our societal constructs and beliefs as a shield against change or a reason to keep others at arm's length, then we will be liberated from fear and be able to achieve whatever we can, such as cutting down this tree. So that message must have been very important to the Nomatics team, the people behind this simulation, as they would only be able to create something that lasted beyond the annihilation of the human race if they didn't believe that they could prevent it from happening, or that humans were naturally not deserving of such destruction. I came to another realisation over here. The world kind of slows down when you pick up an axe. All urgency pales when confronted with the opportunity to have a good old swing. If I was playing in my own time, I'd probably have run around this entire area, chopping up all the shrubberies. Just in case there was something there, you know? that's a whole mechanic. Possibly just for this one puzzle. It could show up again, but I don't know what else they'd do with it. Of course there are those boards in each of the temples, but that's about it. I guess I should have a good look around for an axe next time I'm up by the tower. The second log doesn't have much to it. It's a quote by Samuel Butler, again saying big things are composed of small things. A city is comprised of people, a body is like a city comprised of all of these routes and paths. In particular blood vessels, which ties into the Talos principle in a weird way. A philosopher cannot live without his blood, but removing the blood from a philosopher is a pretty large undertaking. It involves the destruction of millions of transportational processes. And holy heck this room. This is what a robot's blood vessels look like.
bit of breathing space here. As you can see, I don't have to be quick, I just have to not do anything stupid. It's an anti-stupidity endurance test. keep really good track of not just what you're jamming but where you're putting the jammers. They can save your life but they can also be a hindrance. Almost there now. How do we approach this last section? If I get all four orbs staggered in the right way I could sort of weave between them? There you go, I trapped an orb between a wall and a jammer and forgot I could still move sideways. Let's get back to where we were and keep my distance this time. It's really nice to see the gloves come off. I can only imagine what the other star hubs would be considering they most likely employ connectors. I'm not too bothered that the difficulty might be oscillating a bit. It's better when puzzles progress by mixing things up and challenging established expectations. The last log is again from Arcady, and again he opens by saying, you all know me so you know that I know what I'm talking about, which I have to assume he puts at the start of all of his emails. It looks like he's talking to researchers at a university who are all working on projects in order to avert the upcoming disaster. So this whole extended life project wasn't the first thing people turned to. It was the last resort to deal with the worst case scenario. He describes the exact nature of the project, seeking to preserve the non-biological components of what constitutes the human species in the hopes that they be recovered in the future by other local or non-local sentients. He says it will include all cultural works, scientific insights, history, DNA, as can be gathered in the time remaining. I'm guessing kind of teased by this orb. It knows I can't just stop it in place because there's nowhere else for me to go. The last room prompted me to deal with this in a particular way that you'll see, but looking back an alternative that I could have done is use this jammer to open the barrier that I first came through, then wait just past the barrier until the orb goes by, then jump out, grab the jammer and use it to open the one down here. It would have kept the orb out of the way at least. This whole room isn't too difficult. It's basically something I've done before but on a much larger scale with way more components with a bit of forced waiting so I'm more likely to slip up. That area is getting awfully busy and I'm going to need to go through there in order to get back out again.
It occurs to me that all of these puzzles are teaching me to be way too haphazard with these mines. Post-apocalyptic worlds have a tendency to be strewn with explosives. After however many millennia, I'm going to be decommissioned in seconds. like a traffic cop. Not that barriers like this would make the roads any safer. It'd just lead to a massive increase in people being sliced in half. By just barely sneaking through, this orb gets one last jab at me. I'd done so much by this point, I couldn't remember what I was doing it for. There's an easter egg. It's really short, so I just appended it on here. I did wonder why there was the option to set the quality of mirrors. Yes, I know, I should have retrieved the axe and brandished it here. I'll leave that image up to your own robotic uprising nightmares. See you next time. Back in the desert, same time as always.